Welcome to Tax on App. With Tax on App, you can pay your taxes and file returns wherever you are using your smartphone or tablet. It's easy, safe and convenient. In this video, we show you how to register for a T-PIN. To register for an individual resident T-PIN, start by opening Tax on App on your phone. Select T-PIN Registration. Fill in the taxpayer registration form. Enter your taxpayer type, title, first name, middle name, last name, gender, street, area, province, town, PO box number and reasons for registration. Once you're done, click Submit. You'll receive an SMS confirmation message on your phone with your details. Congratulations! Now you have a registered T-PIN. If you're an individual non-resident, you can also register for a T-PIN by following the same steps. For more information, call ZRA on 4111 or visit www.zra.org.zm or you can email advice at zra.org.zm. The Zambia Revenue Authority. My tax, your tax, our destiny. Good morning, welcome to Tax Chat. Now today we discuss one of the very interesting uh, topics that uh, you and I might have come across but I've never realized. Think of a moment where you imported a vehicle and the moment it reached the border you were told, hold on, you need to engage a clearing agent. That might have been very inconveniencing because I've gone through that experience as well. But of course one thing that we need to realize that engaging a clearing agent is a matter of fact. It is a requirement that has to be uh, followed to the latter. And today, for that reason, we discuss licensing of a clearing agent. My name is Oliver Nzala, and I'm not alone. I'm with my colleague, who is a senior collector from the Customs Services Division, Alfred Peary. Alfred, good morning, and welcome to Tax Chat. Good morning, Oliver. Thank you so much. Now, talking about uh, licensing of a clearing agent and just the requirements, I, like I mentioned, I, I found myself in a situation where you are so happy, you are so excited, and you know that your vehicle has reached Nakon the border, the money is ready, all you are waiting for is to pay. And you are told, no, you need to engage a clearing agent. And you start asking yourself, who is a clearing agent? Just, just shed light on that. Uh, thank you so much, Oliver, for that question. Uh, a clearing agent is a go-between between an importer or an exporter with our customs. They help the importer to clear their goods. So in, in, in terms of, but why do, we, do, I, do I really need a clearing agent when um, in actual sense, because every time in the mind of a person who has bought goods, all that I need is to, to pay. Is it right to tell me that, okay, this is how much you're supposed to pay and I pay. Why does an importer or exporter need to engage a clearing agent? Uh, thank you so much for that question. Um, for an importer or any person who bring in goods uh, with $2,000 and above, it is a requirement that they will need to engage a clearing agent to help them with the clearance of those particular products. So when, when you talk of uh, goods with uh, more than $2,000, these are, what are they classified? Are they classified commercial? What criteria do you use to really tell that this is more than $2,000? Uh, uh, it is a requirement that uh, when you come with your goods at the border, mm -hmm. you are supposed to make a declaration to customs. Now, when you make that declaration, there is a declaration for personal goods, which we, those we call them uh, petty consignments. And the value for those goods are $2,000 are going down. And then for any goods which are above $2,000, those are considered to be commercial and they are supposed to be cleared through an agent. So... Having, having said that now, I, I would like to really find out, for the sake of our viewers out there, what is the role of a clearing agent in, in, its, in its entirety, other than just you know, uh, uh, clearing goods on, on my behalf? What, what is the role of a clearing agent defined by the Zambia Revenue Authority? Um, the clearing agents have a different roles which they are going to play as they are clearing these commercial goods. For example, they are the ones who are going to handle the documentation. They are going to submit the documentation to customs. The other role of a clearing agent is um, to make sure that they report to customs that the goods have arrived. They also report to the importer that the goods have uh, arrived. Uh, there are times the agents are also involved uh, in the helping to pay mm -hmm. for the taxes for the importer. They also help to answer to any queries that might come 
uh, from customs on behalf of the importer. There are also at times when um, the importer, the agent can actually keep the goods on behalf of the importer before the clearance process is finalized. There are times when uh, ZRA might ask for a bond or they might ask for a guarantee. The agent might come in and do those activities on behalf of the importer. So actually the agents, they do play a very important role in the process of clearing goods. So in, in this process, if I'm importing something, my role is to, is Zambia Revenue Authority is basically asking me to trust the clearing agent. Yes, you are supposed to trust the clearing agents. These are people who are licensed uh, with the Zambia Revenue Authority. And uh, you can find them on our website. We have a list of the agents who are licensed in that particular year. On our, go on our website, you'll be able to find them. You even find their details about their contact numbers and their, f their email addresses. You, you've just said uh, uh, clearing agents who are licensed. Do, we, do you have cases where some ag clearing agents uh, conduct business on behalf of uh, clients, but they are not licensed? Do, do we have any uh, circumstances of that nature? There could be such circumstances, but they are not able to deal business with Zambia Revenue Authority. Those who are able to do the business with Zambia Revenue Authority are only those which are licensed, and they are given the rights to register their bill of entries in our system. That's, that's very interesting. So if I want to register as um, uh, a clearing agent with the Zambia Revenue Authority, what... Are there any categories of, for licensing or in terms of the type of license that I can apply or the license itself is just uh, uh, something that, you know, uh, caters for any type of business with the Zambia Revenue Authority? Okay, thank you, for, thank you so much for that question. Um, any company, any limited company which is registered in Zambia can apply for a clearing agent's license. And um, there are different types of licenses which are given. But firstly, when you apply for a license for the first time, we are going to give you one type of a license, which we are only going to be clearing final clearance only. Mm -hmm. So meaning that a new company applies for a license to ZRA, and they are given that license, then you are going to give them a license to deal with the final clearance of goods only. Final clearance of goods, these are goods which are meant for the Zambian market. And when a company operates for a period of 12 months, mm -hmm. after 12 months, which is a probation period, then they now qualify to apply for the other type of licenses. And these are licenses which are one, uh, final clearances plus removal in bond. Removal in bonds, it means you are moving these goods into the country without paying the taxes, and then the taxes are going to be paid later on. Mm -hmm. I can give an example of uh, companies like... Uh, these who import a lot of vehicles like Toyota Zambia, when they import those motor vehicles, they bring them under removal in bond. And uh, when they keep them in removal in bond, once they have got a customer, then those goods can be cleared once they have been bought from the bonded warehouses, or they can be exported. Mm -hmm. Okay, So that's the second type of license where you're saying you're dealing with final clearances plus removal in bond. The third type of license is where you're going to deal with the final clearances plus removal in transit. Removal in transit, these are just goods which are passing through Zambia. They are entering from one border to the other border. For example, the goods are entering from Kazungula border and they are going to Congo. So they are just passing through our country. Those are called removal in transit. That's another type of a license. And the final type of a license is what we call um, a full license. A full license means that that particular agent can deal with final clearances, you can deal with removal in transit. You can remove, can deal with removal in bond, which means they can do all the type of licenses. Very interesting from uh, Mr. Perry there. Well explained. Remember, if you're just joining us, we're discussing licensing of clearing agents. Uh, for those of you that might have missed um, uh, what he has uh, just said, remember, after this uh, program, we'll still be able to post uh, this uh, program on our Facebook page. You can still watch at, uh, at a different time. But talking about the types of licenses that uh, you've just mentioned, what then are the requirements for one? I know, for example, um, uh, Michelo Mutaipa says, I want to be a clearing agent. What is the requirements? So it, it does actually bring us to, uh, to this next issue. What are the requirements for one to be registered as a clearing agent? 
Thank you so much for that. Like I said, that the first requirement is that uh, you must have a limited company which mm -hmm. is registered in Zambia. Once you have done that, then the other requirements will follow. For instance, we need the PACRA documents because the PACRA documents are the documents which are going to show that yes, you have got a limited company which is registered with uh, PACRA. So you give us the PACRA documents. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, would like even to advise the agents that the best document that you can get, for example, from PACRA is the printer, the company printout. Because the company printout from PACRA, it actually provides the summary details that the ZDR is looking for, for a particular company. So all the details about the, the directors, the, the, the shareholders, whether you are actually uh, paying your returns to PACRA, all those documents, all that information is going to be provided in the PACRA documents. Mm -hmm. So apart from the PACRA documents, the other documents that we need are the clearance letters from the ZRA. We have got a clearance letter that we need from the domestic taxes to make sure that actually you are up to date with your returns with the domestic taxes. We also need um, a clearance letter from the customs. We have got a unit called the trans transaction monitor unit. Mm -hmm. So you need to get a letter from the transaction monitor unit to show that uh, you actually don't owe anything to the Zambia Revenue Authority. Apart from that, also we need the documents of your employees, uh, the certified qualifications of the employees. All those we need them, the certified copies of uh, NRCs for your employees, for the directors, and also for the office where you're operating from. We need the documents to show the principal office. So in this case, we're looking at uh, the lease agreements. Mm -hmm. So that uh, this is yes, this is my office, and this is the lease agreement that I have. You don't, you don't want briefcase uh, clearing agents. No, we should be able to trace you. <laughs> In an event that there's something that we want to find out from you, ZDR should be able to know where to find you. So we need those documents. Like I said earlier, for the first applicants, mm -hmm. those are the documents that we need because we're just applying for a final clearance only. Yeah. But for the other type of licenses, there are also other additional documents that we need. For instance, if you are going to apply for a license to deal with the transits, the removal in transits, we also need to ensure that the offices where you are going to operate from, for example, Kazungula, uh, Nakonde, you should have an office there. So you, will need us, you, you need to give us lease agreements or title deeds to show proof that you have got offices in those areas. Mm -hmm. uh, on top of that, you also need to get a bond from the insurance company or from the bank. Okay. Now, I, um, one thing that I've realized uh, here is that there are certain uh, people that will register a business um, and then for some time they find that they are, not, you know, they are not operating or they are not conducting business. In an event that someone gets a license to be a clearing agent for one year and then in that one year they, do not, they are not operational, can they still renew that license? Um, Thank you for so much for that question. When you apply for a license, you're going to give you a license for a period of three years. So the license is valid for a period of three Even years. Even the first application, the first license. The first application, it's valid for a period of three years mm -hmm. from the time that you are given. And then uh, within that period of those three years, you can do your business. But after the three years, you'll be required to apply for renewal. Yeah. renewal so it doesn't license. matter whether you are not be doing business or not, you can still renew. You can still renew, yes. That's, that's, that's quite interesting. Okay, so you can, um, I think, uh, Georgia, you've uh, gotten that clearly. And uh, there's another um, uh, question coming from King. Just uh, quickly, before we go for a break, I take this question. Why is it that even with all my bonds in place and ZDI having approved my license, I still need to apply for any if I want to add a port? Very interesting question. Yeah. Uh, the reason why we demand that um, you must apply to add a port is because that you need to give us the documentation to show that you have got an office at that particular port. Mm -hmm. Remember, like we said, that it is a requirement that you should give us the document to show that you have got an office at that particular port. Mm -hmm. So if at the time when you are applying for the license, that port was not included, then you need to apply for you to include a port by providing us that now, yes, I've got an office now, here is the lease agreement, or these are my titles for the new office that I would like you to add. There's so much more to talk about licensing of a clearing agent. Please stay with us just to ensure that you get the right information and the procedures for applying as a clearing agent. The sooner you get licensed, the better. You do not need to be 
operating with an, without a license. You do not need to be a swindler out there. Remember, once you are caught you know, doing business without a license, the Zambia Revenue Authority will put, has put in measures to ensure that you do not continue. For example, we block tippings and we ensure that we report you to the security wings. Stay with us. When we come back, we continue discussing licensing of a clearing agent. Welcome to Tax on App. With Tax on App, you can pay for your taxes and file returns wherever you are using your smartphone or tablet. It's easy, safe and convenient. In this video, we show you how to file a return. Open Tax on App. Click on Sign In and enter your T-PIN and password. From the menu on the left side of your screen, select File Return. Select Tax Type. Select Liability Type. Select Return Period. Select Type of Return. Fill in Return for non nil returns. Once you've completed filling in your details, click the Submit button. You have successfully filed your returns. Remember, the same process can be followed for the following tax types. Turnover tax, nil and non-nil return. Value added tax, nil. Insurance premium levy, nil. Provisional income tax return, nil. Domestic local, excise, nil. For more information, call ZRA on 41111 or visit www.zra.org.zm. You can also email advice at zra.org.zm. The Zambia Revenue Authority. My tax, your tax, our destiny. Thank you so much for staying with us. Remember, we are discussing licensing of a clearing agent. And with me today, I have... Alfred Piri, Senior Collector from the Customs Services Division. He has been uh, working on licenses of clearing agents for a long time. He is specifically in the Credibility and Controls um, Unit. Alfred, now we were just talking about the requirements and I'm glad that you've responded to uh, some of the, you know, the questions and uh, comments that uh, people have asked. Um, Munaf Patel, thank you so much for uh, staying with us. And uh, this is one of our ardent followers on the uh, ZRA tax chat. Now, Talking about the application process itself, how does one make an application to become licensed with the Zambia Revenue Authority as a clearing agent? Uh, thank you so much for that question. Um, the process of applying for a clearing agent starts when ZRA puts in adverts in the, in the paper. Or maybe before we talk about the, how one does that, let's mm -hmm. just discuss first the, 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 the settings that Zambia Revenue has. Uh, there is a committee which is called the Advisory Committee, which is in charge of licensing the clearing agents. Mm -hmm. And this Advisory Committee consists of uh, members from uh, Minister of Finance, Minister of Commerce, uh, the industry, that is the associations. By the way, we do have uh, three uh, associations uh, where clearing agents are supposed to be affiliated to. Okay? So these three associations are also part of this uh, Advisory Committee. Then you have the ZRA senior management okay. with the credibility and controls as a secretariat. And this advisory committee do have three sittings in a year. We have the main sitting. Uh, the main sitting usually takes place in October. So what will happen is that uh, right now we are preparing for adverts, which are going to put into, into the papers, asking for all those companies who are interested to apply for licensing to do so. Hold on on that. So take note of that. Uh, come October, look out for the advert uh, requesting for... That's October, right? No, Oliver. This should, this should be a few weeks from now. A few weeks from now, yes. actually. So the adverts will actually start running in August. In August. Okay. okay. So in August, we're going to run the adverts. So usually we'll run two adverts. Mm -hmm. The first advert we're going to run is to ask the, uh, the companies, those, especially those who are already operating mm -hmm. and want to renew, to clean up their accounts. Okay. So we'll ask them, can you please clean up your accounts? If you have with any outstandings with the Zambia Revenue Authority, please make sure that those uh, outstandings are cleared. Uh -huh. So we'll give them the first advert. That advert should be coming out any time, a week or two weeks from now. Uh -huh. Then after that advert is out, then we'll again post another advert again in August, asking them now to start submitting uh, the documents applying for licensing. So the window for licensing usually opens from 1st to 30th September. Okay. So that's a period when we start receiving these documents. So please, you need to submit these documents to credibility and controls. 
you bring in your files and submit them to credit bid and controls and do, we do encourage uh, those who are interested to make sure that they should submit those documents uh, not after 30th October because if you bring them after 30th September then you are going to be late so please make sure that you prepare the documents starting from now and come 1st September to 30th September you should be able to bring those documents for the main licensing if you have just joined us, this is uh, the right time. You've joined at the right time. Look out for those adverts calling for um, uh, people that want to be registered as uh, clearing agents or licensed as clearing agents. Look out for those adverts in the month of uh, uh, August. And uh, like Mr. Piri has said, uh, the window for applications is uh, normally between 1st to 30th uh, September. So ensure that you put together all the documentation that is needed you can visit our website for more information under the customs menu and you'll find the licensing of a clear agent and the requirements will be there so just ensure that uh, you have all the right documentation and uh, you submit i know that someone was asking that they want to uh, they, they were looking for employment as a clearing agent but the the standard procedure is that you get licensed so please ensure that you get your documentation and uh, make that application so, like I was saying, there are three sittings. The mm -hmm. first sitting, that's the main sitting. So, this main sitting, that's when you're going to have these adverts where we're going to ask for these documentations. Mm -hmm. And the sittings is likely to take place in uh, October. Then, after the main sitting, then we have what we call the appeal sitting, which is likely to happen maybe in November, December. The appeal sittings is looking at those who are not going to be successful during the first main sitting. So, they'll be given a chance now to submit their appeals. There could be one or two documents that could have, they could have missed during the main sitting and then we'll inform them that this document is missing or you didn't meet because of the following things, then we'll give them again a second chance to submit those documents. But I need to make it very clear, Oliver, mm -hmm. that um, during the appeal sitting, we do not accept any other applicants from outside. It's only those who are submitted during the main sitting that are considered during the appeal sitting. Okay. That's why we're emphasizing that, please, this is the window, the main sitting, when you can actually submit your applications if you want to be considered for licensing next year. Then after the appeal sitting, we also have another one which we call the, uh, the, the review sitting, which usually happens in uh, June, July. Mm -hmm. like, like we had just one uh, last week. Last week yeah. we, we had one, uh, the, uh, the, the, what, the, the media review. During the media review, mainly that one, we don't accept applications for the new applicants. <coughs> it's just those who have licenses already and they just want to upgrade their licenses or they want to add one or two stations. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, Levy Tembo has uh, asked a very interesting question, but uh, I can quickly check that one. Levy says, is it possible for a person without a license to clear imported vehicles? Can I send you a name of a clearing and forwarding company and check for me if it is registered okay so the quickest and easiest uh, method you can use levy is to go on uh, our zdi website and uh, go to the customs menu at the very bottom you'll find the list of the licensed clearing agents so look for that company if it is registered with the zambia revenue authority if it is not uh, you can uh, also uh, engage us uh, by calling us on four triple one and uh, then we can um, you know uh, uh, take that matter further. We have, been, we have seen many companies closing because they can't get clearing from uh, TMU. Uh, why can't you consider introducing provisional licenses as they meet the requirements? That's a question coming from Murita Pasmo. Um, thank you so much for that question. Like we did mention that um, it is a requirement that you must clear your outstanding obligations. So it is a requirement that you must actually have clean accounts. Mm -hmm. So we may not give someone a provision license. That's why we are putting that first advert so that they should clear all the outstandings that they have. So we're having that first advert to give them an opportunity to make sure that they clear all outstandings. Once they clear all the outstandings, then that's when they're going to get a clearance letter from our, uh, our TMU. Okay. Uh, John uh, Nyemba says, uh, when there's a change of company name with PACRA and the amendment with ZI domestic taxes, uh, Department is done as well. Is it necessary to amend on the license and what's the procedure and requirements? Yes, it is necessary. Uh, if there are any changes, uh, you are supposed to submit that those changes to credibility and controls. If you look at our, the piece of legislation that we use, Gazette 425 of 2005, mm -hmm. it actually indicates that if there are any changes of the directorship or even the address where your office, your principal office is, you need to submit 
those changes to the assistant commissioner credibility and controls so that also credibility and controls can update and keep updated records okay now in the past we've uh, the zambia revenue authority um, has uh, suspended some of the tippings for the taxpayer identification numbers for some of the clearing agents what has been uh, the reason for such action by the Zambia Revenue Authority? Uh, there are various reasons why a tipping for a clearing company can be suspended. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is that maybe they have got outstanding obligations. Uh, if you have got any outstanding obligations, then the tipping for the declarant who is an agent is going to be suspended automatically mm -hmm. until that outstanding obligations has been taken care of. And also, secondly, there could be that maybe there is an offense which has been committed by the clearing company and the Zambia Revenue Authority is carrying out investigations. So during that period, this, the, the tipping for the agent is going to be suspended because Zambia wouldn't want to uh, allow that clearing company to continue maybe committing those offenses until such a case has been resolved. So there are a lot of reasons why the tipping for a clearing agent can be suspended. Even smuggling? Even smuggling, like I said, they have committed an offense. An offense yeah. uh, I didn't want to go into the different <laughs> smuggling is actually one of the offenses. All right, so ensure that you do the right thing. Avoid smuggling. Avoid misusing other people's tippings as well. Do the right thing. Ensure that you use the tipping that uh, has been assigned to you. Remember, equally as an importer or exporter, you have the right and you can actually appoint a clearing agent of your own. In fact, this, the power lies in you. You can go to our website, find out which people or companies are registered to clear um, goods on behalf, uh, you know, that are licensed to clear goods and you can engage them to do business with you. We take another quick break. On the other side, we take more of your comments and we close up with uh, the last part of uh, licensing a clearing agent. Stay with us. Thank you so much. Welcome to Tax on App. With Tax on App, you can pay for your taxes and file returns wherever you are, using your smartphone or tablet. It's easy, safe and convenient. In this video, we show you how to make payments using Tax on App. To get started, open Tax on App. Click on Sign In and enter your taxpayer identification number and the password that you use on Tax Online. From the menu on the left side of your screen, select Payments. Proceed and select the Pay for Liabilities option. This will allow you to view your outstanding payments or liability details. Select all the liabilities you want to pay for. Review the payment details, then click the Proceed button to generate the payments reference number, PRN. Select Pay Now and proceed to pay on the generated PRN. Well done! You've successfully made a payment. For more information, call ZRA on 4111 or visit www.zra.org.zm or you can email advice at zra.org.zm. The Zambia Revenue Authority. My tax, your tax, our destiny. Thank you so much for joining us. We are glad that... Uh uh, you are with us on this issue of licensing clearing agents. I, I know that someone just quickly asked that, do I need to pay any taxes for me to be licensed? Um, there are no taxes to be paid, but there is a fee, mm -hmm. which is uh, 20,000 fee units. Okay. Uh, translating to how much in kwacha? Uh, that's 6,000 kwacha. 6,000 kwacha. Okay. So even for the first license, it's just, is it a flat rate for... Uh, renewal and uh, first applicant for, for the renewals there's nothing you need to, don't need to pay anything mm -hmm. yes so for the first applicant that's okay. where you pay the uh, six thousand uh another question that uh, comes from um i think it's a comment from uh, rigi mwape says we have never renewed our license since ex it expired in 2015 is it going to be an issue for us to renew our license now all they need to do is they need to submit their applications and it will be considered as a new applicant mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so I hope you've gotten that uh, rig mwape. All you have to do is uh, uh, submit uh, your application, uh, ensure that all the documentation is in place and it will be treated as a new application. Does ZDRA have its own clearing agents? That's another question coming from Jetsons. No, ZDRA don't have their own clearing agents. <laughs> okay, Jetsons, we do not have clearing agents. The clearing agents are independent uh, business companies that deal uh, with um, uh, exporters and exporters. 
uh, independently, like I said. So uh, ZI does not have clearing agents. So keep sending your questions and comments. Will be uh, Mr. Piri is here to respond to those questions and, uh, and, and comments. Now the other issue is uh, basically for qualifications. Do I need qualifications uh, considering that uh, um, you said that the, the person has to be, uh, you know, uh, registered as a company. But in terms of personnel, if I have my own employers, are there any qualifications that must be attached, even to me as an applicant, or I can be anyone? Anyone from society can uh, can just make an application as long as uh, they have the right documentation. Yes, sir. <clears throat> there is a requirement for the employees that you are supposed to employ. Um, uh, we need someone who has been trained in clearing agents, as well, someone has a skill or a certificate in clearing. Apart from that, we also have those clearing agents who have been in the business and they have got the experience. So if there are two things that we look for. We look for one, if one has got the qualification in the clearing, or if someone has got the experience in the clearing industry, maybe have been working for a minimum of two years, then those are the qualifications that we look for the employees. Okay, you, you, you just talked about uh, an interesting part, but another comment, okay, I think this one has been responded, but talking about the qualifications uh, themselves and being trained in clearing, where can one then get this training of uh, becoming a clearing agent? Um, there are a lot of uh, institutions where they're offering those trainings, but I need to mention that um, there, there will be a change soon mm -hmm. um, where Zambia Revenue Authority uh, with the NIPA, they have gone into an agreement with the NIPA where clearing agents will be will start being trained in the uh, customs matters, and I think NIPA has been running adverts on that particular uh, in, in that particular area, where clearing agents have been asked to apply, and uh, NIPA will start uh, calling those who have been successful, mm -hmm. and once they are called, we help NIPA in training the clearing agents in the issues to do with customs. Okay. As we know, customs issues are very technical. That's why we require actually employees who are trained in these areas so that uh, a good job is done as they are clearing the goods on behalf of their clients. Now, as, as, as we near the, the end of this program, Mr. Piri, for importers that engage licensed clearing agents with the Zambia Revenue Authority, where they have, uh, an, uh, th they have a disagreement or there's lack of trust between the two and or maybe just something, some fraud cases uh, uh, happened. How, how does the importer, uh, can an importer engage the Zambia Revenue Authority just to ensure that, uh, you know, uh, maybe the clearing agent has gone loose, has run away with the goods, and, and they were engaging this clearing agent for the first time. Is there any recourse of action that a, uh, a client can engage the, the Zambia Revenue Authority to just help deal with that? Yes, uh, the client can actually report such cases to ZRA mm -hmm. because like we said, uh, these agents are actually licensed with us, mm -hmm. with the Zambia Revenue Authority, and uh, we know how to deal with them in an event that they have committed an offense. We we'll either suspend their license or even go to an extent of revoking them. They can even uh, be taken to court mm -hmm. if those cases are reported to Zambia Revenue Authority. Okay. So we need the, the import actually to help us in such cases to report to Zambia Revenue Authority so that ZRA and take the appropriate measures okay. uh, with those uh, clearing agents. And Oliver, maybe just to mention that also that uh, because of these challenges that we've been having of uh, tipping abuse, for instance, mm -hmm. the Avenue, uh, Avenue Authority has come up with a system where we are encouraging the importers to actually lock in their tippings to the agents of their choice so that no any other agent can have access, access to, to those tippings. So that information is already available on the website and uh, at the moment, it's actually optional, but we know that come next year, that is going to be mandatory. So we're actually encouraging a lot of um, uh, importers to make sure that they actually lock in their tippings to the agents of their choice, so that uh, no any other agent can abuse their tipping. Okay, interesting. If you're just joining us, sadly, we've come to the end of this program. But uh, please uh, be sure to ensure that uh, for anything that you might have missed, you can still uh, watch this program as we are going to post it on our Facebook page. We've been discussing licensing of uh, clean agents. And uh, with me, I was glad to be joined by Alfred Piri, who's a senior collector from the Customs Services Division, shedding more light on how uh, one can be licensed as a clearing agent. For more information, like I said, go to our website. 
uh, which is scrolling at the very bottom of your screen go to the customs menu on our website click and you find uh, at the very bottom uh, information that you need about um, you know license uh, you know getting licensed as a clearing agent as well as the list of licensed clearing agents with the zambia revenue authority i've been your host my name is oliver nzala until next thursday bye bye and god bless you Welcome to Tax on App. With Tax on App, you can pay your taxes and file returns wherever you are, using your smartphone or tablet. It's easy, safe and convenient. In this video, we show you how to log in. To get started, download the Tax on App from the App Store or Google Play Store. Once app is installed, open the application and click the sign in button. If you are already registered with ZRA, enter your taxpayer identification number and the password that you use on Tax Online. If you would like the app to store your login information, click on the box next to the words Remember Me. Click on the sign in button and you will be able to access your account. Now that you're logged in, you will be able to pay for your taxes and file your returns from your phone. For more information, call ZRA on 4111 or visit www.zra.org.zm. You can also email advice at zra.org.zm. The Zambia Revenue Authority. My tax, your tax.